Welcome to Apache Spark Performance Tuning on Databricks. In this video, I will talk about the course and try to help you understand who is this course for, what you will learn in this course and how this course will benefit you. So let's start with the simple first question. Who is this course for? I mean, is this course written in PySpark or it is written in Scala? What is the language used in this course? The answer is both. This course is taught in PySpark as well as in Scala. Every scenario, every example, every piece of code is written in both the languages, PySpark as well as Scala. And in fact, performance tuning applies to both the languages in the same way. It is performance tuning, right? Performance tuning and optimization is independent of the programming language. But since you are familiar with one of the programming language, we are writing all the examples, all the source code in both the languages to help you learn the techniques uh, explained in this course. So this course is for both the languages. Now let me walk you through the course curriculum and what you are going to learn in this course. Uh, this course is designed as eight different chapters. Each chapter has its own focus area. We work on a specific category of performance tuning problem and approaches for uh, solving that category of uh, problem. So the first chapter is getting started. And this is the basic chapter, foundation chapter, where you will learn what is performance tuning, what we are supposed to do as part of the Apache Spark uh, performance tuning and optimization activity. What are the different challenges, difficulties and problems that we face uh, for a performance tuning activity and how we can overcome those difficulties and challenges. We will learn all that in the first chapter. That's a groundwork done uh, in the getting started chapter. And we will conclude that chapter with a uh, discussion on performance tuning goal. What is the performance tuning goal? Do we tune it for time? response time or we tune it for cost or what is the trade-off between time and cost and how these tie up together. So we will finish that chapter with that understanding and we will be ready to take up the real challenge of uh, doing the performance tuning and achieving those goals. And from second chapter onwards, we will start focusing on the different areas of performance tuning. The second chapter is tuning data storage and read operation. If I ask you one simple question, what is the performance tuning and optimization that should be applied to each and every query or piece of code or every Spark application operation? What is that? Simple answer to that question is every query, every Spark piece of code, every unit of work need to read data from the source system or the storage. So first and most important piece of optimization is to optimize the read operation, how we can read more efficiently, more uh, quickly, at least possible cost from the storage layer. How do we read data? So, and what are the performance problems associated with the read and the storage? What are the techniques that are there to optimize that area of the bottleneck, performance bottleneck? So we will learn all that uh, in the second chapter, uh, 12 to 13 lectures are planned for this. We will go through the details uh, in the course. Uh, the third chapter is performance tuning the data spill problem. So we will learn what is data spill, why it happens, in what all scenarios you can expect a data spill to happen. How do you go and detect the spill in your application, whether a spill is happening or not? And once you detect it, how you attack it? How do you solve it? What are the different uh, techniques to solving the spill problem? What are the problems caused by the spill problem? And what benefits you are going to get once you solve the spill problem? All that we will learn in the chapter three. Uh, moving forward, the fourth chapter is focused on the data is queue. So we will learn what is data is queue? What are the challenges associated with the data is queue? How do you detect the queue? And what is the severity of the queue? Right? Should you attack it to solve or should you leave it and live with it, right? What are the different types of SKUs? What is the impact of different type of SQ? What are the different SQ tuning techniques? Which technique to be used in which kind of scenario? When which technique is more beneficial? All that we will learn and we will uh, solve many SQ scenarios. We will see that uh, how to implement those techniques. The next chapter is on data shuffle. Shuffle is possibly the most expensive activity for any Spark application, every Spark uh, query. So we will learn what are the shuffle related problems, what are the different types of problems that a shuffle can cause, how do we uh, tune the shuffle, 
what are the different approaches for tuning the shuffle uh, we will also generate lot of uh, out of memory exceptions caused by shuffle to understand how dangerous it could be and how do we mit mitigate those uh, problems so all that we will learn shuffle is not only applicable for the joins it is applicable for all wide dependency transformations so we will learn what are the different types of wide dependency transformation which may create a shuffle related problem uh, cause bottlenecks and how do we tune those scenarios uh, next is data serialization and code serialization problem so we will learn what is the serialization related problems or performance uh, bottlenecks especially this is the area where pi spark and scala are little different um, serialization problems for pi spark are different serialization problem for scala are different so solution for uh, both the languages are different we will learn what are the data serialization code serialization problems associated with pi spark what are uh, those with scala language and what are the different techniques to solve those which one to use when and we will solve a uh, lot of uh, serialization problems and then next chapter is leveraging new features of apache spark and some additional features and capabilities of Databricks uh, cloud platform. So in this uh, chapter, we will learn what are the new features offered by Spark 3 and above versions of uh, Apache Spark and how you can use or leverage those features and capabilities to uh, optimize the performance of your application. For example, we will be learning about AQE, we will be learning about um, uh, dynamic pruning, data skipping and all that. And AQE or these features, uh, they are out of the box feature, but they don't work uh, as desired. Uh, it's not like you switch on the AQE and boom, everything works uh, as you desire. No, we will have to fine tune AQE according to our requirement, according to our scenario. So we will learn all that in this uh, chapter. And uh, along with that, we will also learn some of the Databricks capabilities. Finally, the last chapter is focused specifically on Databricks. In this chapter, we will learn Databricks clusters, performance and the cost. So basically, we will learn how to choose the cluster type. Databricks offers different types of uh, clusters. So how to choose, what are the decision making criteria for choosing the right cluster type? Uh, what are the um, rationales behind choosing different types of virtual machines uh, for creating your cluster? Do you need Photon Engine or it's not uh, required for your application or your scenario will it benefit because there is a lot of cost associated with the photon engine so do you really need it uh, we will also learn how do you estimate number of cpu cores how do you estimate number of workers how do you estimate uh, what kind of uh, auto scaling is required do you really need auto scaling or uh, you don't need it or if you need what uh, is the degree of auto scaling that you might need right and then we will learn how uh, to understand monitor and look at the different uh, utilization levels of uh, components within your cluster like your cluster utilization cpu utilization memory utilization what are the utilization goals how to uh, monitor that and what to do after that once you know what is your utilization what uh, is your next step so all that we will learn in this chapter so top to bottom it's a huge course with lots and lots of learnings, more than 60, 70 lectures, uh, explaining different concepts, generating various uh, scenarios on huge volumes of data, and then investigating, detecting, and solving those problems. That's what we are going to learn in this course. So huge course, a big, big opportunity for you to learn this uh, area of uh, Spark performance tuning and optimization. I'll see you in the course. Keep learning and keep growing.